5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. At the very end of Mark's gospel, after he rises from the dead, Jesus says this to his apostles. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So is baptism necessary for salvation? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that, as always, we love listener feedback. So if you've got questions about today's, today's episode, or if you have ideas for future ones, please contact us. The easiest way to so, do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. I am joined in studio once, well, once again, like last week, but not just once again, Again. Again and again and again. And again and again by one of my regular co-hosts, Robin Bruggeman. Hey, Robin, how are you? Hello, I'm fantastic. Fantastic. I am also fantastic. Robin, I introduced you last week, but why don't you do it yourself this week? <laughs> Robin Bruggeman, I'm married to Spike. We have seven kids. We have two grandkids and three kid-in-laws. Kid-in-laws. I'm a Catholic convert. I love the Catholic faith. I love learning more about it. And... Asking Dr. Bergwald questions that I don't know the answer to. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how today's topic arose. Uh, I am Chris Bergwald. I am director of... Discipleship Formation. For the Diocese of Zoo Falls. <laughs> I've been in that role how long, Robin? You said no pop quizzes before we started recording. But 20 something. 22. 22 years. <laughs> 22 years. Um, more importantly, married to Jermaine for... 20. T five. T five years. Um, she, we, she and I have five kids. She's from Ohio. I'm from Central Minnesota. All of our kids are born and raised here in lovely East River, South Dakota. Ooh, Robin, East River. as you know, when you're on the show, I ask. I like to ask you, Robin, what should we talk about? Because I want you to be interested mm-hmm. in whatever we're talking about. Because if I pick the topics, you may not always be interested. Mm, maybe. Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so the necessity of baptism mm-hmm. um, is a question that you pose. Now, um, without divulging details mm-hmm. that you would just to keep people's confidence, mm-hmm. uh, can you in broad strokes talk explain why this is a topic so the question has come up in my circle um, of someone who has passed away that was not baptized they were an adult i don't know their church situation they're not catholic Um, so then there's just wonder well what happens then wonder i think by the people of maybe the family but then also the Catholic perspective. So what do we think then? Because, well, we know maybe what we think as Catholics, maybe, but what do we think outside, you know, to someone who's outside of the faith? Um, but yeah, if they weren't baptized, do they still get to go to heaven? Right. Then, so I guess that's yep. kind of the root of it. And it's, so this is a question that a lot of people at some point wonder about, mm-hmm. um, and whether they ask it aloud to somebody or not, it's a common question. Um, and, well, I have, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is the church does explicitly address the question. The maybe bad news is she doesn't do it with maybe with as much specificity mm. as we would like. Mm. But before I get into that, I want to give a little bit of history. So this is a question that has been posed almost from the beginning, be, beginning because... Mm-hmm. Uh, just to use the example of the passage that I read from Mark chapter 16, it seems like uh, baptism is a big deal, mm-hmm. and it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus commands the apostles and Mark and other places, uh, Matthew, uh, the end of Matthew's gospel, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing, baptizing them. them. Yeah. Uh, Jesus commands the apostles to proclaim the gospel and to baptize people. Uh, And the church has been doing that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, We understand baptism to be the means by which God pours his salvation out upon us, by which we are joined to him in a bond of, well, a family bond. We literally become 
God's sons and daughters uh, by virtue of our mm-hmm. baptism. He gives us his divine life. His own, he, he dwells within us as a result of baptism. It's the gateway to all the other sacraments. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Um, so from very early on, there was the question, okay, so what about those who aren't baptized? Mm-hmm. Because th- there are important things uh, to remember. Be- because of original sin, because of the fall, mm-hmm. all of us are conceived in a state of original sin without God's life within our souls. Um, and in order to enter into heaven, we need to have, have God's life within our souls. Uh, so there is a bit of a dilemma, a conundrum mm-hmm. there. Okay, so... If baptism is how God's life gets in our soul, what about people who live and die without ever having been baptized? This is not a new question. Yeah, I'm sure they the probably church. asked it in Jesus' right. time. Um, I, I don't know about Jesus' maybe. time, but I think maybe probably not. in the apostles' time. And we know that mm-hmm. the, the church started to, we, we see early church theologians um, addressing this question from very early on. So St. Augustine, so before I get to St. Augustine, this is where it's really important to make the distinction between what's a a common Catholic explanation or answer to a question and what's the official Catholic Hmm. response to a question. Because... Good Catholics throughout the history of the church have come up with all sorts of different answers to this question. Uh, and I said, as I said at the very beginning, the church answers the question, but maybe not with not as much specificity as people would like. The church, uh, at least to this point, has not... Um, what's the right way to say this? Well, the church has not said, yes, that theory is... That explanation is the Catholic explanation. So a lot of Catholics mm. have different answers to the question. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the Catholic answer to the question. So, for example, St. Augustine said, no baptism, no heaven, period. Mm. Period. Well, St. Augustine, people would say, what about um, innocent human beings? So children mm-hmm. prior who die prior to the age of reason. Mm-hmm. Saint Augustine said they are in the, uh, the, they're in hell. Really? Yes, but not <clears throat> uh, in the place of least suffering within hell. Interesting. What, and the reason Saint Augustine said that is because of the necessity for grace to go to heaven, and and from his understanding, there's. Baptism is the means by which we receive God's grace. So mo- no baptism, no sanctifying grace, therefore no heaven. Now, other theologians, uh, their response to that question, so St. Thomas Aquinas is one of many who said that um, no bap. okay, they, they agreed with Augustine. Mo- no baptism, therefore no sanctifying grace, therefore no heaven. So instead, the, the souls of those who are innocent of any actual sin would go to a place called limbo. That's right. I have heard of that. Uh, so limbo is a theological idea, uh, a, a theory that there is the state of existence mm-hmm. um, that is pure natu- natural perfection, but no, not supernatural perfection. So it's not hell. It's not the, the um, uh, so St. Augustine said, like, the lightest suffering possible. But it's, it's not even light suffering. It's, it's no suffering, but there's no beatific vision, which is one way to define what heaven is, where you see God in all his glory. So um, the, the hypothesizers of limbo would say, uh, with St. Augustine, the the souls of those be, again because we don't have a right to heaven we don't have a right to heaven god desires heaven for every, god desires that all people be saved mm-hmm. but if you're not saved and you're innocent the the thought here was you go to limbo now the church has never formally condemned or affirmed saint augustine's theory 
The church has never formally condemned or affirmed the theory of limbo. What the church, so the church has raised this question um, in, in our times. Oh, well, what actually, okay, yeah, yeah, the, the church has not done that. But the church has raised this within the catechism of the Catholic Church, which is official, which you are somewhat familiar with, Robin. A little Brightman. bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, so in this section of the catechism, which deals with baptism, so part two of the mm-hmm. catechism, chapter two on the seven sacraments, uh, no, section two, uh, uh, which is on the sacraments, chapter one, which is on the sacraments of a Christian initiation, the first article is baptism, because that's the first of the sacraments. Mm-hmm. And in there, uh, s- part six is titled The Necessity of Baptism. So people want, th- and so this is official church teaching on the sac- uh, on the question of the necessity for baptism of baptism, so it's articles twelve fifty seven through twelve sixty one. So if you're googling this, you would Google CCC or Catechism We Have the Church, but CCC space twelve fifty twelve fifty seven will almost certainly get you to this mm-hmm. article, right? So this is how twelve fifty seven reads: The Lord Himself affirms that baptism is necessary for salvation, and there's a footnote there. Uh, John 3, 5. Uh, what do we read about in John chapter 3? Do you remember that, Robin? For God to love the world. Yeah. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> so who is Jesus talking to in John chapter 3? All of us. Well, No, yeah, no. He, it's a, there's a conversation <laughs> at night. It's in the The, the apostle. No. The... Nicodemus. Oh. It's a conversation Nicky Davis where Jesus talks about being born again. Oh. AKA baptized. Born oh. of water and the spirit. Okay. Baptism. He also commands his disciples to proclaim the gospel to all nations and to baptize them. The footnote references Matthew chapter 28. Go there for and baptize, uh, baptize all nations. Yep. Uh, that one. I'm like, I got stuck there. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. And then he goes on. The catechism goes on. Baptism is necessary for salvation for those to whom the gospel has been proclaimed and who have had the possibility of asking for this sacrament. The footnote there refers to Mark chapter 16. So I'm going to repeat that sentence. This is a really important sentence. Baptism is necessary for salvation. For those to whom the gospel has been proclaimed and who have had the possibility of asking for this sacrament. So, if I've heard the gospel proclaimed and if I'm able to ask for it, I need it. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. Yep. The church goes on, though. She has more to say. The church does not know of any other means of any means other than baptism that assures entry into eternal beatitude. This is why she takes care not to neglect the mission she has received from the Lord to see that all who can be baptized are reborn of water and the Spirit. So again, the church does not know of any means other than baptism that assures entry into eternal beatitude. This is why she takes care not to neglect the mission she has received from the Lord to see that all who can be baptized are reborn of water and the Spirit. You with me? I think so. Then the final sentence in 1257 is italicized. God has bound salvation to the sacrament of of baptism, but he himself is not bound by his sacrament. So there's more, but there's a lot going on there, uh, Robin, in your head. Uh, I I don't know if I'm getting a blank look (laughs) or a pondering look. It's not a ponderous look, but maybe a pondering look. Well, it just, you know, and I'm going to assume that other people um, that are listening are having the same thought is, so, okay, yes, so people who hear the gospel proclaimed, they ask for it. Um. But for these people that don't know and they've not been brought up to know, 
or have the opportunity to be baptized. So they don't know the gospel proclaimed maybe, or they would maybe ask for it. But then you ended, so I'm like still in this like, but but what? But then you ended with, but God isn't, why do, how do you word that, isn't bound? I didn't word it anywhere. The catechism. The catechism. <laughs> Where, God, what part of the catechism did you read that said that? But God isn't bound. God has bound salvation to the sacrament of baptism, but he himself is not bound by his sacraments. Not bound by his sacraments. So, so God can do whatever he wants, obviously. Right. Right. And that's, so that's what it always comes down to is like the, well, and if, if I've ever been asked that question, I'm like, well, I am not God. I'm not going to judge or anybody's going or not going because right. God is the judge of that. That's not my business to judge where they're going to end up. But I just still feel like that, like you're, what you ended on there left an opening. Yes. So again, the church does not know of any means other than baptism that, is, that assures entry into eternal beatitude. That's why she takes evangelization so seriously. However, Mm -hmm. while God has bound salvation to the sacrament of baptism, he himself is not bound by his sacraments. Okay, so let's go on a little bit more, okay? Because uh, the church has, well, the church recognizes some exceptions. Mm -hmm. 1258. The church has always held the firm conviction that those who suffer death for the sake of the faith without having received baptism are baptized by their death for and with Christ. This baptism of blood, in italics, like the desire for baptism, brings about the fruits of baptism without being a sacrament. 1259. For catechumens, what's a catechumen, Robin, do you know? Somebody who is like wanting to join the church. And has not been baptized. Specifically. Oh, specifically not baptized. Yep. yep. For catechumens who die before their baptism, their explicit desire to receive it, together with their repentance, for, the repentance for the sins and charity, assures them that salvation assures them the salvation that they were not able to receive through the, excuse me, through the sacrament. Okay, so right there, there there have been people in the history of the church who died as martyrs for the faith prior to their actual baptism. Mm-hmm. There have been catechumens, so people in our sense who are going through RCIA or OCIA, mm-hmm. as it's called now, mm-hmm. um, who have died prior to being baptized. In both cases, they're regarded as having received Because salvation. it was like their intention. They desired it. Yeah, they desired it. it. Just either because they were killed mm-hmm. or they died, yep. they weren't yep. able to actually receive it. 1260. Uh, begins with a quote from Vatican II. Since Christ died for all, and since all men are in fact called to one in the same destiny, which is divine, we must hold that the Holy Spirit offers to all the possibility of being made partakers in a way known to God of the Paschal Mystery. The Catechism goes on. Every man who is ignorant of the gospel of Christ and of his church, but seeks the truth and does the will of God in accordance with his understanding of it, can be saved. It may be supposed that such persons would have desired baptism explicitly if they had known its necessity. Mm -hmm. So this right here to me is kind of, this is the answer to the question as you posed it. The answer to the question that as many people, God wants all people to be saved. Um, Everybody, so those who are ignorant of the gospel and of of, of Christ and of his church, but seek the truth and do the will of God in accordance with his understanding of it. So insofar as they they do God's will to the best of their ability, as much as they understand it, they can be, not that they will be, Mm -hmm. but it's possible for them to be saved. It may be supposed that such persons would have desired baptism explicitly if they had known its necessity. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, Finally, 1261. As regards children who have died without baptism, so this is this is also a key point. Again, going back, baptism is the no, only means that we know of that assures salvation. As regards children who have died without baptism, the church can only entrust them to the mercy of God, as she does in her funeral rites for them. Indeed, the great mercy of God, who desires that all men should be saved, and Jesus' tenderness towards children, which caused him to say, let the children come to me, do, under, do not hinder them, allows us to hope that there is a way of salvation for children who have died without baptism. All the more urgent, the church is called not to prevent little children come to Christ through the gift of holy baptism. So that right there, that we hope that there's a way. So a hope is not just, 
optimistic. Like it's well, it's well founded, but it's not. Okay, this is definitely the case. So that's that's children. So there we do think of children will die because of abortion or because of miscarriage, whatever the cause of their of their their death. Um, that there is uh, a, a good reason to hope uh, in their salvation. Mm-hmm. But so, so to summarize all this, we know that baptism saves. We also know that God wants everybody saved. So it seems likely that he might allow, would allow some other way for people to receive that sanctifying grace, which is necessary to enter into heaven. But we don't know that. So we, to me, just as we um, entrust them to the great mercy of God, we that is children uh, who die prior to baptism, that's that's what I do with all those who have died uh, without baptism or in some sense apart from the church or practice of Christian faith, faith in Christ. I entrust them to the mercy of God. I pray, I believe that salvation for them is possible, even if it's not assured because they, never, they were never baptized. Mm-hmm. So we still have about six-ish minutes left. Questions, comments? No, it's all, it's all good. And um, I guess my takeaway from the catechism then, which is like the formal <laughs> right belief, right, um, is that it makes clear how very important baptism is. Yes. Um, and the incredible gift that it is. Yes. Which is why we desire to do that for our children when we have children and we bring them to be baptized because it's such an amazing sacrament filled with so much grace and so many gifts. Yep. But so I I think that the church wants to be sure that people know that. So that's why it starts that way because otherwise people would be like, eh, it's not that big of a deal if I, if I'm baptized or I get my kids baptized. So the church is clear then and being like, no, it's, this is so important. You really need to be baptized. But if there's a reason that someone hasn't been for whatever reason, especially if it was not of their choosing that um, we believe that the church like has that grace or believes in that grace e- and God's mercy. Yep. So it's all good. And I love that you say, you know, God desires everybody to be with him. Yep. That's why he created us that's, that's to know him, love him, Timothy serve him, and his, to be with him well, forever. Paul's inspired words. So there is a balance out there. Because, so yeah, we, we don't presume that mm-hmm. they're in heaven. We can't presume that they're in heaven. Mm-hmm. But we also shouldn't despair that they're um, in hell. Right. We don't presume they're in hell either. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, so we pray for their salvation. Uh, we pray that somehow they were able to receive that sanctifying grace, which is necessary to enter into heaven. Now, what mm-hmm. I, I do think this is a... So is what I'm saying, so, so well, I, I can't, I, I was going to try to like, devil's advocate against myself by putting words in your mouth, but that'd get really confusing. <laughs> Thanks. It's not <laughs> that God is standing at the gates to heaven or St. Peter to use the, you know, it's not like somebody's standing at the gate to heaven and be like, so look at, like looking like, like for your ticket. Yeah. Well, where's your card? Where's baptism your card? Where, where's your baptism? Where, where's your sanctifying grace card? Come on. No. You need your baptism certificate to get in. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and, and oh, no, it's like, I, I think somebody could misconstrue or misunderstand this in sort of a very legalistic way, which is mm-hmm. not the case. I, I, heaven, like, I have no. I don't have a right to heaven. Heaven is an incredible gift that God the Father wants to share with all of us, with me, with Robin, with Ben, with everybody. He wants to share this gift with all of us. Um, but that doesn't mean that, therefore, well, I'm, well, we're all going to heaven. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hope so, but I don't know so, and I shouldn't presume so. Therefore. So yeah. we, uh, I desire the salvation of all men, just like St. Paul, who was saying, we inspired God to, by about God to say that. So should, we should work for the salvation of all men and not presume that everybody's going to automatically go to heaven. Does that mm-hmm. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah, truth. You know, I mean, I don't know if this is appropriate to bring up then along with this. I think you've done a beautiful job of clarifying this. 
um, the answer to the question, but you know, we're entering into the season of fall as we're recording. And you and I have recorded on the topics of death and yeah. um, purgatory, all these things. We've done recordings on that in the past. Um, but to the people who have these questions, especially if it's someone in their life that they're like, oh my goodness, you know, they weren't baptized, or, you know, maybe it's something else that they have a hang up on. Are yep. they going to heaven? Because, yeah, we don't know. That's between them and God, but for that we can pray for them. Yep. And the church has given us such a beautiful prayer yep. to do that. Yep. And um, so I think that can be a beautifully comf- comforting way to um, to just to tend to that. Yeah. That thought that someone has, oh, are they, aren't they? Like, oh, no, they weren't, whatever. Does that mean they can't, whatever? Um, I think it's good to, you know, get the clarity that you have provided with what the, where the church stands on that. Um, but that then a person can also enter into prayer. Pray for them. On that. Pray for Absolutely. that person, for their soul. And and pray, too, to for peace yourself because God's going to give you that yeah, peace, yes, too. Like, yes, I, you yes. don't need to be stressing about that. Yes. That's not for you to worry about. Yes. It's, I mean, that's nice. You want to worry about your loved one? Absolutely. But let, let go and let God. Like, he's, he's taking yeah, worry, care of worry it. Worry is always... Useless. useless yeah yeah but that you can instead pray for that person in their useless. soul right that is so incredibly powerful and like so we've talked on in past episodes yep. about that yep but i think it's appropriate i think to bring that in yeah I, I, the I, eternal I'm rest glad. grant unto them O lord and the perpetual light shed upon them amen yeah, yeah so yeah. we right because again we sort of and you see this like more and more you're seeing where you have a celebration of life for somebody mm-hmm. which is okay to celebrate somebody's life uh, and the great good that they've done or the good that they've done is is a good thing. But we should pray for them because mm-hmm. we don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We, we don't know their eternal destiny. Yeah. I hope they're saved. Yeah. I'm not saying they're probably in hell because if I thought they were in hell, there's no point. I don't pray for Satan because Satan's in hell. Right, right, yeah. Uh, but for everybody who I know who isn't yet canonized, mm-hmm. I, everybody, even people who I'm confident are probably in heaven. Until the church says, hey, Chris, you can call them Satan. Pope Francis doesn't email me. Chris, you can call them Satan. But, you know, yeah, yeah, the church, yeah. until the church canonizes them, I don't presume that they're in heaven yet. And my mm-hmm. prayers for them are efficacious. They mm-hmm. work. So, yes, especially. It's a pretty big deal. I mean, it's because a big deal. just in yeah. case they're not there yeah. yet. There's no, har- there's no harm in it. Whatsoever. Right. Yeah. They're not out anything. Amen. And I think and that it'll just give you more peace. Amen. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. Folks, that will wrap up this episode. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org, with questions about today's episode or ideas for future ones. Until next time, may God bless you.